Hey, what is up mortals? It's Careless Rex here with a new video for you. In this video, we'll dive into the character Taiyu Oki from the Dr. Stone anime. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So let's get started. Taiyu Oki is considered one of the most friendliest people. He is outgoing as well as enthusiastic about performing even the smallest tasks. He will prove himself useful by shouting whenever he is performing such a task, and even though he is emotional and impulsive, he can control his temper. Taiyu has physical prowess, in which Senku is proud of him. He also has immense strength, durability, and stamina by carrying statues. However, even though he has low intellect, both Senku and Yuzuriha try to help him to learn. Despite his massive strength, Taiyu is a pacifist and refuses to fight others because he doesn't want to hurt them. He loves Yuzuriha, and could not confess his love to her because of the petrification of humankind. He also admires his best friend, Senku, and despite his limited knowledge in science, he gets easily impressed by his inventions and assists him with his experiments providing a workforce. When Taiyu was young, his parents died of unknown causes, but he quickly befriended Senku and Yuzuriha. Their bond became so strong that both Taiyu and Yuzuriha assisted with Senku's experiments. One of their experiments involved deploying light objects into orbit with a self-made rocket. The rocket did not make it to outer space, but it shot the stuffed toys that Yuzuriha made. Taiyu also helped Senku make a suit for his father to pass his swimming exam and go into space. On a normal day in school, Taiyu was talking with Senku, and he claimed that he would finally confess his love for Yuzuriha. Senku then said that he would support him from the school chemistry room, to which Taiyu responded with enthusiasm and gratitude. Senku then offered him a personally concocted love potion, which would guarantee the chance that Yuzuriha would accept his confession. Taiyu refused the offer and told Senku that he would confess to her fairly. Afterward, Taiyu invited Yuzuriha to the schoolyard while he was being observed by the student crowd. Most of them were betting that Taiyu was going to get rejected. Senku, however, bet the largest bit on him getting his feelings reciprocated. When Taiyu was about to confess to Yuzuriha, he noticed a wide light appearing from behind them. He decided to shield Yuzuriha from the light rays, but there was no effect, and Yuzuriha, Taiyu, and the rest of the students were turned into stone as well as the whole world. While in the petrified state, Taiyu noticed that even though he was turned to stone, he was not dead and needed to keep his concentration intact or else he would likely fall unconscious. At an unknown point in the future, Taiyu wondered how many years had passed since the petrification event. He worried about Yuzuriha but assured himself that she would not have died and that he would also survive purely on his willpower. At some point, Taiyu lost track of time and he pondered over how long he had been petrified. However, for unknown reasons, Taiyu was turned back to normal. He observed his surroundings and noticed the school was gone and all the topography of Japan had changed. Taiyu also noticed the people around him were all turned to stone. He lamented them for being stuck in that state. Taiyu decided to look for the tree where he wanted to confess to Yuzuriha all those years ago, to see if she was still there. He reached the tree and found a petrified Yuzuriha. Taiyu thanked the tree for protecting Yuzuriha and promised her that he would save her. While talking to the statue, Taiyu noticed a scribbling on the tree indicating that Senku had been unpetrified and was waiting for him by the river. He quickly went to the area where the scribble told him to go and saw his friend Senku. Taiyu quickly tried to hug him, but Senku pushed him away and criticized him for staying asleep for way too long while he worked for nearly half a year alone stating that the day was the 5th of October, 5738. Shocked to hear about the day, Taiyu inquired on how Senku knew the day, and was astounded by the fact that Senku counted the seconds the entire time he was turned to stone. Taiyu and Senku relied on each other and aspired to free the world from the petrification curse and save Yuzuriha. Taiyu was tasked with collecting food, and while he was gathering the goods, he found a cave. Inside, he found a sculpted bucket collecting liquid dripping from the cave ceiling. He wondered who was the one who put the bucket there when Senku entered the cave and told Taiyu that it was him. Senku elaborated that the liquid dripping from the bucket 
was nitric acid and was used to erode the stone of petrified statues. However, they also needed alcohol to combine it with nitric acid. Taiyu suggested that he could make alcohol out of grapes. Sinku loved the idea, and after much trial and error, they finally succeeded in unpetrifying a bird. Sinku said to Taiyu that he was free to pick the first person that they would unpetrify. Taiyu and Sinku went to the tree where Yuzuriha statue was to revive her with the new formula. However, Taiyu began shouting that they couldn't revive Yuzuriha because she had no clothes. While they were both arguing, the duo was attacked by a pride of lions. Taiyu claimed that he would sacrifice himself and protect Sinku since he was essential for society's survival. Sinku refused the idea, and as the pride of lions cornered them, they noticed a statue of Tsukasa Shishio. They quickly decided to unpetrify the statue. Tsukasa quickly neutralized the pride of lions and vowed to protect them. Tsukasa asked the duo if they possessed the tools to use the lion's meat, while claiming that making the meat food is respecting the life cycle, in which Taiyu admired. Taiyu talked to Yuzuriha's statue, asking her to wait a little longer while the group made more miracle fluid. Taiyu was then tasked to gather calcium carbonate, which was important for civilization. He returned with the materials and asked what the fourth purpose of calcium carbonate was, but Senku replied that there were only three, suspecting that Tsukasa might have different motives. After Tsukasa and Senku argued, Taiyu ran to them with a pot containing the complete miracle fluid while exclaiming that they could revive Yuzuriha now. Senku suggested to Taiyu that the revival potion needed more fluid to revive a person and to gather more at the cave. However, Tsukasa also suggested that he should retrieve it since he was the fastest. Senku accepted his request, and Tsukasa left for the cave. While Tsukasa was gone, Senku checked his surroundings to ensure there was no sign of him. He quickly ordered Taiyu to unpetrify Yuzuriha while Tsukasa was absent because he could not be trusted. Taiyu doesn't question his friend and concludes that something must have happened between Senku and Tsukasa while retrieving the miracle fluid. Soon after, Yuzuriha gets revived as Taiyu cries of happiness. As Yuzuriha was happy to see Taiyu again, their reunion was cut short by Senku asking them to flee and live a normal life or fight alongside him to stop Tsukasa from destroying all the human petrified stones. Suddenly, without having the chance to respond to Senku, Tsukasa arrived and threatened Taiyu with Yuzuriha's life. Taiyu asked Senku to look after Yuzuriha while he assaulted Tsukasa. He quickly grabbed Taiyu and spin-kicked him away. Tsukasa commended Taiyu for withstanding his kick and that he was the first person to do so. Taiyu quickly ordered Tsukasa to stop breaking statues. However, Tsukasa responded that there was no point to that statement and quickly threatened Yuzuriha's safety. Taiyu quickly fell unconscious because he was threatening Yuzuriha. Tsukasa told the unconscious Taiyu to protect Yuzuriha and left. Both Yuzuriha and Senku made remarks about Tsukasa's inhuman strength when suddenly, Taiyu was woken up by Senku while Yuzuriha was surprised over how quickly he recovered from passing out. Senku then told Taiyu that they were going on an adventure to make gunpowder. Yuzuriha was concerned for Taiyu and asked Senku if Taiyu should sleep to recover instead, showing that she cared for Taiyu. Senku then decided to gather materials to make gunpowder to combat against Tsukasa. Taiyu and the rest of the gang made their way to find the material's exact location, and it was in Hakone. Senku was trying to pinpoint the location accurately, but failed only for Yuzuriha to notice a space where the trees were supposed to line up with the rest. The group ran towards the space and found the great Buddha of Kamakura. Senku was pleased with Yuzuriha's discovery since the statue helped in marking their current coordinates. Filled with melancholy, Yuzuriha reminisces about when she visited the Buddha statue with her parents when she was younger. She realized that the world was completely different, and all her memories are centuries old. Taiyu tried to give her some comfort by saying that the statue helped them find the way. Soon after, the group reached Hakone and noticed a hot spring and decided to take a break. 
While they were at the hot springs, Taiyu told Yuzuriha that he was waiting the entire time under petrification to tell her something. Yuzuriha gets flustered and asks Taiyu what it was that he wanted to ask her. Taiyu finally wanted to confess his love for Yuzuriha, but he felt that saying it now while they were stuck in the new world wouldn't be a great idea. He then told Yuzuriha to wait until they restored civilization. Senku was able to acquire sulfur and mixed ingredients to make gunpowder. He asked Taiyu to start pounding it with his fists. Yuzuriha was worried that Taiyu would cause sparks while he pounded the mixture with a boulder. She eventually asked Senku if he truly planned on attacking Tsukasa with gunpowder, only to respond that he would only use it to negotiate. The group decided to put the residual fire from the mixture as they noticed a smoke signal in the distance. Yuzuriha suspected that it was Tsukasa trying to trick them, but Senku said that it was coming from the opposite direction from where they came from, but remained cautious. Senku decided to take the risk and light another smoke signal. Taiyu observed the three smoke signals and went back to Senku and Yuzuriha to inform them that there were probably other humans in the perimeter. He quickly arrived only to witness Senku being killed by Tsukasa. He quickly charged in to recover his friend. Taiyu and Yuzuriha broke down in tears with his friend's corpse in his arms. Tsukasa, with no empathy whatsoever, told them to get Senku a proper burial. Yuzuriha then assured Taiyu that she believed in the trio's promise long ago. Taiyu agreed, and he threw a boulder upwards to create a diversion for Tsukasa as Yuzuriha kicked a pot where the gunpowder was. The falling boulder crashed towards the scattered gunpowder and sparked an explosion. It was the perfect opportunity for Taiyu, Yuzuriha, and an unconscious Senku to escape. After they escaped from Tsukasa, Yuzuriha mourned for Senku's sacrifice. Taiyu assured her that Senku wouldn't sacrifice himself nor commit suicide. Instead, he would look for a solution to save everyone. Suddenly, Yuzuriha remembered that Senku was rubbing his neck while he was talking to Tsukasa, as if he was inviting him to injure him in that spot. The two decided to inspect Senku and noticed a small piece of stone left, still petrified. They quickly poured the miracle fluid over it, hoping that it would revive their friend. As the rain stopped, Yuzuriha and Taiyu worried that Tsukasa would hear them now, as the ambience around them was now silent. Senku finally woke up, and Yuzuriha delightedly welcomed him back. She made a new cloth for Senku, and suggested that he should use it as a flag. She also attempted to treat his neck, with Senku denying treatment because he confirmed that it was healed. Soon after, Yuzuriha consulted with Senku, and told Taiyu that they should go back with Tsukasa, while Senku explained that they would serve as his spies, now that Tsukasa believed that he killed him. Taiyu agreed to Senku's request while both he and Yuzuriha parted ways hoping that they would meet again soon. A year passed, and Senku made allies for his kingdom of science. He built a phone that was able to talk to Taiyu after so long. He felt emotional over the call since he had been away from Senku for over a year. Taiyu and Yuzuriha were able to recruit new allies from the Tsukasa Empire and reunited with Senku as they met his new friends from Ishigami Village. After defeating the Tsukasa Empire, Taiyu aided the rest of the villagers in farm work and was crowned king of farming for his expertise. He also aided them by creating roads. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials have got you covered. Our We the Celestials My Hero Academia and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I'd like to extend you an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being that we only accept members from 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us.
Well, that's it for us for today's video. So thank you all for watching and have a great day.